thank you very much for the introduction and also for the opportunity to present uh, in this uh, in this group. What I want to talk about today uh, is uh, whether there is an ontology specific to agroecology or whether we can imagine that agroecology is, uh, there, there is a corresponding ontology to the agroecology movement. Um, yeah, and I do assume that a lot of people uh, here have an opinion about that. And so I'll be curious to see how um, the propositions uh, that I make here, which also based on literature, uh, receive echo. So in this first part of agroecology, of, of asking uh, what could be an ontology for agroecology, I'll, I'll talk about agroecology as a decolonized vision of relationships within food systems. And uh, in a second part, I will uh, ask whether uh, one can uh, say that in agroecology, we have uh, a redefinition of goals of the uh, yeah, farming and food uh, systems. Um, and thereby a redefinition of the relations between the market uh, activities and the reproduction activities or the, the home economics activities, uh, talking about reproduction. Uh, and as an outlook, um, I will talk about um, whether agroecology is really an alternative food system, whether it's a parallel food system, um, and uh, about the idea of investigating that question. Okay. Yeah, I would like to start with this um, this idea, um, which is the motivation for for uh, addressing agroecology from yeah a um, meta perspective. Our inner models, our inner mental models, mirror the outer reality. By changing our metaphors and values, we change our actions. So I'm citing from Gavra, who's an environmental uh, ethicist. Um, and this uh, sentence for me uh, illustrates uh, the idea that uh, it's we must uh, think uh, on a meta scale uh, if we want to change practices towards a goal in a more conscious way. Um, and it's this meta level, yeah, that I want to address in this presentation. So it's the uh, metaphors and the values that are behind principles and practices that I would like to address. So yeah, could agroecology be an ontology or rather more precisely, um, sorry, is, is, can, can we define some kind of ontology or recognize a, a specific ontology specific to agroecology? Um, yeah. Uh, agroecology has been defined, of course, in many different ways by many different groups, and uh, the definition of agroecology is still uh, uh, problematic. Um, in this talk, I won't uh, impose a certain definition um, and hope I will still be clear, but I want to acknowledge uh, the work that has been done in terms of defining agroecology and the many different domains that have been addressed just by this word, by this terminology. So of course, uh, an important paper defining agroecology was written by Wiesel and um, uh, other French and American colleagues. Uh, when defining agroecology as a science, as a movement also, and as a practice, somehow uh, all of three existing uh, separately. That vision was also a little bit challenged, saying that the one cannot exist without the others. So these three aspects of agroecology are more um, interwoven. Um, that would be the position also held by Pember in, in uh, Great Britain. Um, of course, one has also looked at agroecological markets uh, in order for ag agroecological practices or movements even to exist away from science. Um, one has looked at the practices uh, also as a form of uh, basis for redesigning farming systems, but also food systems. And then one talks about agroecological agro food systems. The FAO, of course, has contributed to defining principles for uh, agroecological food systems. Uh, and um, one has defined food systems in, in many interwoven ways, especially in the agroecology literature. Um, finally, one has proposed that agroecology is just not a set of principles, but is a paradigm, a global paradigm to challenge men, uh, the mainstream industrial agriculture. And if it's a paradigm, um, 
then what is really behind that? Um, this this um, this view uh, of agroecology as uh, being defined. Uh, sometimes only in terms of practices and sometimes in terms of much more has also been um, summarized by Cerdan and colleagues uh, from uh, from the CIRAD uh, who defined two um, cases sort of of agroecology. They bridge upon the definition of weak and strong sustainability uh, developed by ecological economists. That's why I, I actually liked this uh, way of depicting uh, weak and strong agroecology, although yeah, one can discuss that where the weak agroecology would uh, basically uh, focus on principles and practices, but the strong agroecology will encompass also social political aspects. Um, I would I would say that one can go even beyond that with a paradigm, my dear, and ask whether there are some basic values, representations, and aims that are underlying all design principles and ideas of uh, of even strong and weak agroecology, uh, and whether they can be identified. Um, and if that is the case, then we would have a potential role of agroecology as an ontology, or we would find a kind of ontology that is transported by agroecology movements and practitioners, peasant practitioners. Um, yeah. So um, the idea here for me is to see which values and beliefs or, yeah, can be revealed and articulated through a reading of agroecology inspired by political ecology and also feminist economics. And the question uh, would be how would an ontology for agroecology movement sound like? What would it sound like? Um, and I suggest in this talk that the oncology, ontology for food systems proposed by and underlying the activities undertaken by agroecology peasant actors would be based on uh, these points, but not necessarily only these points. Uh, first, system thinking. Second, egalitarianism or more egalitarian power relations within farming and food systems. Um, third, the reproduction and maintenance of the life basis, uh, the um, basic goal. And one finds all the time, at least in Germany, uh, constantly this constant of transformative creation. That's how I called it, but the, the, the desire of transformation and the action towards transformation, societal transformation. Um, so I've added that here. Um, yeah. And so I would like to explain these points slightly more. I won't spend that much time on system thinking because I think that agroecology deals with system thinking is quite yeah, acknowledged or accepted by pretty much everybody. I think they get egalitarianism, egalitarianism points uh, maybe worth uh, spending one or two minutes on and also the reproduction uh, aspect. Uh, and I would like to give then some examples of findings that we found uh, among um, in case studies in, in Germany. Um, so first agroecology as a decolonized uh, vision of relationships within food systems. Um, which relationships am I talking about? Um, yeah, I would first like to talk about this slide and then I will have to come back, sorry. Um, I would like to, uh, when I talk about relationships within the food system and the farm system, this is more or less in this triangle. This is how I see farmers' practices in their uh, food system. I see them as interwoven, embedded in a landscape, interwoven in that landscape. So I see farmers' practices as the result of their interaction and, and especially power relations. Of course, there are not only power relations, there is knowledge that uh, take place. There is a lot of things, other relations, of course, that will shape them, but also uh, as a result of power relations with markets, as a result of power relations with peers and uh, power relations with the ecosystem and the farm resources. Um, and uh, markets, the ecosystem, uh, ecosystems and, and, and peers, of course, or the whole range of peers also interact uh, among one another. Of course, this is a systems perspective. And so the farmers practices reveal, but at the same time, they shape uh, the power relationships uh, between the farmer and her environments. So the different environments. So these markets here, the word market symbolizes both the inputs and the outlets. Um, 
yeah, peers symbolizes basically the social sphere uh, with peers also within the household and the ecosystem and farm resources, basically their relationship with nature, but the own managed nature, so the farm, nature on farm. Um, yeah, and from that perspective, I will talk about um, the you probably can see my mouth, mouse <laughs> first here, the relationships, the colonized relationships uh, with ecosystems and uh, and then with this, uh, with this part actually, especially this one. Okay, um, so if I go back, uh, I think that uh, it's quite clear in the relationships with nature that the farmer uh, has with nature, th that through adopting agroecological principles, um, we have a, at least more environmentally friendly um, relationship to nature, uh, one that is definitely system thinking based on uh, enhancement of biological interactions and synergies on recycling um, and be it at the level of the field, uh, as you can see the principles on the left hand side or at the level of the food system uh, as the principles from the FAO on the right hand side, all uh, I, many of them, everything that is written in black actually uh, refers to or is based on systems thinking. Um, of course, it's not trivial, but it's more acknowledged. And so that's why I would then continue. Beyond uh, just the idea of systems thinking and environmental friendliness, um, I, I would propose, but I'm not the only one, yeah, I would uh, like support the idea rather that uh, agroecological farmers have a decolonized or entertain or strive towards a decolonized relationship to nature. Um, and uh, by decolonized relationship to nature, I refer to the um, to the dichotomy uh, between uh, man and nature of seeing uh, man separated from nature. So understanding a divide between man and nature versus a perspective or a worldview where uh, humans are part of embedded in nature. Um, this. Um, uh, still, I'm going to keep it short. So, uh, this uh, forms or this divide, yeah, uh, between men and nature um, is represented in different forms of environmentalism, which were um, tagged or yeah, categorized, <laughs> named uh, by uh, Guha and Martinez Allier in their book um, on yeah on environmentalism in 19. Seven, so they uh, point to four different kinds of environmentalism. Well, actually, of relationship to nature, the one is just mere exploitation uh, of resources, uh, where uh, humans see themselves as uh, definitely uh, disconnected from resources and having a right on these resources. Then there is a um, form of time of environmentalism that they name the gospel of uh, efficiency of, of or of eco efficiency. Uh, in this form of environmentalism, um, they uh, foresee that uh, one actually wants to use uh, resources better, one wants to actually have a more friendly approach to resources, but uh, one focuses on uh, increasing efficiency uh, and there is no fundamental question on which relationship we humans have to nature so we still are in control and can use uh, this nature for our purposes because we are not nature and we just try and improve the efficiency of that use. Um, the third one is uh, the idea of sacred nature so that's the second environmentalism kind so to say and in sacred nature this is the um, yeah the environmentalism that is behind the construction of parks, um, where one sees nature as this um, yeah entity existing basically by itself, still separated from us, and that has to be protected from us humans, uh, put behind uh, let's say an exclusive park, uh, and here too we are still using that nature and seeing that nature as separate as something that we still have control on and that we can uh, give life or not give or give space or not give space. Um, and an alternative to that uh, proposed by them is the environmentalism of the poor. Um, in which uh, humans are definitely part and embedded in that nature environment as they depend for their livelihoods on that environment. Um, 
And they propose here that, therefore, first one doesn't need to be rich to uh, care for the environment, but that the relationship is of a fundamental different nature. Um, and the claims of decolonization of human nature relationships in agroecology go that side, the, the side of environmentalism of the poor, where you have a greater embeddedness of people, uh, especially farmers, in their uh, in their environment, and that materializes by a forms of respect towards uh, animal well-being being pushed very far as really a, an, a, a, an attempt to uh, let the animal express itself in a near natural uh, manner. And and for the ways of respecting nature, and we'll see example of that later on. Um, so that would be one aspect of decolonized relationships. And uh, when we when we say decolonize, of course, here we mean then. Therefore, uh, the farmer has less power over nature and accepts also more power from nature. That nature expresses itself more. So nature has more agency, agency, and the farmer uh, has. Um, well, less or has to change actually its agency with regard to nature. So it has to be a, like a partnership. And thereby my claim that the attempt is to have more egalitarian and less uh, top-down relationships to nature in this, uh, in agroecology and yeah. Um, one sees also, um, that uh, agroecology, of course, and you know it much better than uh, than I do, uh, is uh, associated with uh, social movements that really claim for egalitarianism in uh, in a very clear way. For instance, uh, in uh, in the case of gender um, equality, uh, but also even in Germany, in the example that you see, the the, the more colorful. Uh, uh, the hand holding the carrot is a group in Germany, uh, um, East Germany, which uh, attempted to uh, claim for land and have access to land uh, for their agricultural activities, organic or ag agroecological uh, activities and they were having a really a difficult time to access land. So uh, they, uh, they they really created a movement in a group uh, which they called Stop Land Grabbing at first uh, in order to access land, uh, claiming that they didn't have any access as compared to other uh, actors of uh, agriculture who easily uh, found access uh, due to the way that land was being distributed. Um, so the question is, uh, does the exercise of a decolonized relationships towards nature, does it require that the farmers also redefine or redefine uh, ties to the rest of the food system? Um, in, uh, in other words, does the is it important? Uh, the, do the relationships with the input uh, and the output market and the peer group and the rest of the family members, do these relationships also matter in order to shape the relationship to nature of the farms and vice versa? Can change relationship with nature and practice also help me to shape independence or uh, increase my agency within the household, etc. So that's that's my claim. That's if you start changing uh, power relationships in one part of the of the of the system, then you will uh, you you will be able to change other relationships too. Uh, on the contrary, yeah, you cannot just change a piece of the system. Um, and that would explain why agroecology, yeah, is difficult to constrain agroecology to simply practices. Um, of course, uh, the the concept of egalitarian and egalitarianism and agroecology uh, with respect to markets uh, in the food system that is not a new idea and it has been uh, it has been claimed that uh, there is no agroecology without uh, food sovereignty and no sovereignty can be achieved without agroecology that would also point to this bilateral relationship uh, and uh, so here um, sovereignty can be yeah uh, understood as uh, a change in power relations among the actors of the food system. Um, with the input side, the output uh, side, and also with the peers. Um, and with the aim in the end uh, that farmers and other marginal actors gain power, basically gain power to shape their food system, yeah, and uh, increase their rights, etc. but basically to gain power. And um, the the, the, the parallel there is is that uh, 
that uh, Patel highlights is that then in that case, one would point towards a food system with egalitarian relationships. And in his paper, Patel asks whether one is really serious about it and whether one wants that. Um, and um, to which extent is agroecology actually really trying to create egalitarian relationships? 